Uh, there's a great thing I watched at lunchtime today. It's Irish Pickers and it's on Blaze TV. And uh, it's presented by Ian Dowling in the company of, is it Mutsy or Butsy, <laughs> Ian? How are you right? It's Butsy. <laughs> Butsy, it's Butsy. Butsy. <laughs> uh, And Ali uh, and Vinny is there as well. And you go around the country uh, looking for bargains. I thought, you see, that all the bargains were gone when it came to antiques and stuff like that. Not at all, not at all. You just have to know where to look, right? Yeah. Um, so mainly, are you you're looking for little? Is, are the antiques, or is it all to do with pubs? Because the one I watched was where you went down to Wexford. And was- yeah, we went. To, that's right. We went to a pub that was looking to have a bit of a clear out. Um, no, it's it's not just pub pub items. I mean, anything. I mean, firstly, I, I guess I don't buy any of the traditional type of antiques like brown furniture or silver and you know, uh, fancy paintings. I'm more interested in kind of quirky items um, that don't necessarily have to have a huge monetary value, but that they tell a story um, uh-huh. and you know, have an interesting quirk or history to them. So I can spend thousands or I could spend 20 or 30 quid and I get the same buzz out of it. Okay. And um, they're the kind of items that I look for. Uh, and where does the term picker come from? Um, well, I guess it, it's probably an American term to be, uh, a word to be really honest with you, Ray. But it's, um, I guess, what it is. It, it just basically describes the, the art of buying items with the view to making a profit, and then kind of finding something um, that was hidden away, and then connecting it with a new owner who would never have an opportunity to buy otherwise. So, yeah. I guess that's what it, what, it, what picking and a picker. Yeah, because it's it's related to salvage, isn't it? Is it Salvage? No. Um, well, yeah, so that's right. The same production company who did Salvage Hunters um, are behind Irish Pickers. So it kind of came about because I was actually watching Salvage Hunters and American Pickers and I just thought, you know, there could be an Irish version of this that could rival both of those shows. I mean, Ireland is an ideal picking location. We have a beautiful kind of yeah. country here, scenery, people, ancient history and, and great artefacts. So, um, yeah, I think it's an ideal picking location. Uh, uh, what's your history, Ian? How did you get into it? I always had a knack for buying and selling. That was really it. And then kind of a, in the recession then, um, the yeah, the last recession, I, I kind of had to uh, use my imagination to make a few bob, really. And, and so I just kind of started. I had actually returned from Australia in early '09, and everything had really kind of um, taken a dive. And I was kind of just, to be really honest, I was on the dole. And I just started kind of using that dole money to buy a few bits and then sell them and really I just started just to have enough money for the weekend to buy a few pints and then it just kind of grew from there I actually won believe it or not 13,500 in a pub uh, lottery like a GA um, right. uh, fundraiser and that's actually what I used to, to help set up a website and kind of do it properly you know yeah, yeah. and there's no history of it in the family no, no, no history of it in the family. Like my mum's really in- interested in kind of uh, she's a good eye, you know, uh, for kind of um, interiors and kind of things like that. And my dad's more kind of no, he he likes going down to auctions and stuff like that and kind of hoarding. He's the type of guy I buy from there. Do you know right. what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like a mom. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk individual things. Just from the episode I saw, this is the type of thing you're after. So a first doll photograph, um, you bought it for thirty five euro from Johnny in the sky and the ground, is it, in down in Wexford? Uh, so what happened to that afterwards? Did you make a profit on that? Yeah, that was just a reprint of the first, the famous, the iconic first doll um, photograph where you had Eamon de Valera, Collins and all these people, Arthur Griffiths, all together for the for the one shot. And then shortly after that photograph was taken, um, you know, the, 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 the British outlawed the government and they all went to ground, including Collins. So it wasn't, that wasn't necessarily, I mean, an old piece. It was just a reprint, but yeah. it was nicely framed and it was surplus to their requirements in the pub. And that's why I bought it. So... Um, that sold. I mean, that was eighty-five quid. I think the frame alone was worth at least fifty or sixty quid. It was a okay. nice antique frame. So you, you made know? a profit so, out of that. The one I thing, didn't. the one thing that Johnny wasn't going to to sell for love or money. He wasn't going to part with for love or money. Was the Tato sign? Um, <laughs> yeah. So what was so special about that Tato sign? Well, he didn't have a hat. I mean, I know Who, that, Johnny uh, or Mr. Tato. <laughs> oh, Mr. Tato. Mr. Tato always has a hat on him, and this this particular enamel sign is a quite an early sign. So it didn't have a it didn't have a hat. So it was quite collectible for that reason. Um, right. You know, and uh, yeah. So um, what what, what would that be worth then? Uh, uh, Mister uh, Tato sign with Mister Tato not wearing a hat. What 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 are we talking there? You see, to be honest, that's one of a kind. I've never seen or heard of such a thing, and that's why I wanted it. Um, but yeah. that's also why Johnny 
wanted to keep it. So there you go. That, that's kind of what, what makes the show entertaining because it's all real. I mean, it's my money, firstly, and I'm able to get the best deal I can uh, because it's a business. Yeah. And, um, you know, so, um, yeah, I mean, in that, on that particular occasion, he didn't want to part with it, but... Um, I think it's probably it's, one it, it's odd sort of yeah. um, it's nostalgia nearly now because there's loads of handshaking in it <laughs> oh, no. the good old days yeah, yeah the good I mean, old um, days and, yeah. and there's loads of cash in it as well you've a wad of 50s in your pocket as you travel around it's just more tempting for the you know when you're out doing deals like it's more tempting with, you know to just but I mean I usually um, I mean everything is kind of um, it's just more tempting that way I think for, yeah. for the for, for the vendors but, I mean we found a good lot, lot of stuff like on, on the series like we um, what was your favourite item? Um, my favourite item was a bar that Oliver Reed drank at um, and long story short like that was bought for we bought that for 700 and that was sold for 5,000 Nine five, but my favourite item um, was actually the turnstiles from Croker. Uh, we got two turnstiles, original tur- turnstiles that were used in Croke Park um, since 1914, and so they would have been there on Bloody Sunday and everything. So, I mean, hundreds of thousands of fans would have gone through those yeah, turnstiles. Yeah. Just an amazing piece of social history, you know. Oh, actually, as well, I got the front doors from Bewley, so I was very sad to see Bewley closed. Yeah. I, mean, I still got those the front doors so hundreds of thousands millions of people would have passed through those doors and I've got them now so that's the type of thing I like you yeah. know? and Ian who do you sell to? mostly kind of collectors and business owners yeah they so most pubs clients, you yeah. sell to a lot of pubs the Irish pubs I sell to pubs because yeah I do I sell out to Irish pubs because it's uh, that's, that would be my bread and butter um, so publicans kind of like the kind of items that I buy um, yeah. because you know, they're just kind of um, the items that I buy usually just have character and that's what pub owners like because they're trying to breathe character into their premises and so um, As I was watching yeah. it there you were with William uh, Plummer who runs Loch Garman Antiques and Collectibles and he has his own little bar made there created I think more people are going to be doing that aren't they with a show out the back or a spare room they're going to be trying to create their own pubs because the future of pubs is very shaky at the moment Oh, absolutely, yeah. I think, I mean, I was watching, yeah, I, I was watching a reenactment of what the pub was going to be like on Monday in Clare Burn, yes. and I got the shock, to be honest with you. So I think a lot of people are going to be, yeah, drinking at home. And if anybody's looking to uh, breed a bit, of, a bit of atmosphere and character into their home bar, you know where to find me. <laughs> where, where do you, they find you? RareIrishStuff.com. RareIrishStuff.com. Um, Were you afraid doing the, the, the Irish pickers on, it's, you can, people can see it on Blaze TV, that you'd be giving away your secrets? Yeah, it was a little bit, but I, I mean, I felt it was kind of worth it, you know. I mean, you know, Salvage Hunters and American Pickers are really successful. I mean, American Pickers on 20 series now and Salvage Hunters 14. And I honestly think that we can, yeah. we can, we can build an audience to rival them. So, no, I was a little bit nervous, to be honest, but I'm well able for it. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. I was, I was thinking, where is it? when's that on RT or is it on Virgin Media 1? But it's, it's not available on terrestrial television. How do people find Blaze TV, Ian? Uh, it's 164 on Sky, John, 164 on Sky, but you can watch, the last episode airs tomorrow, uh, we're in Galway, and um, you can watch it on the website blaze.tv, you can watch it live there, you can watch a couple of last episodes there, and you can also download the app, uh, the Blaze UK app, and you can you can watch it there too. So we're just coming towards the end of the series now, I know a lot of people in Ireland haven't heard of it, but I'm sure it's going to be kind of doing the rounds for now, will, there be, will there be season two of Irish Pickers? There will be season two, I, I would expect. It's just with COVID and everything like that. I think yes. everything's up in the air. But if there's any of your listeners that have um, some stuff that they want to sell, interesting stuff, um, any dealers out there, anybody who wants to be involved in series two, then just drop me an email to Rare Irish Stuff or get in touch with the production company. And these people know who they are, do they? You know, they know by listening to you that they, they're the type of people you're looking for. Do you know um, what I mean? So, I said, sorry. No, there's a community. There? There's a community of people who buy and sell this sort of stuff. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean there's there's like there's people that will buy even in you know, I mean antiques and collectibles always sell. Um, you know, you might you might buy for less but you'll still you know, you and sell less in, in, in tough times, but you'll still be able to cut out a profit. And um yeah, look, I mean I think I think there's a lot of collectors in Ireland. I mean I've been doing this now full time for eleven to twelve years, since oh nine. So I mean I've been out in the road kind of, you know, yeah just you done deal adverts, buy and sell the whole the whole lot. Right, and, uh, final question, Ian Dowling, uh, uh, from Irish Pickers is on Blaze TV. You're probably not going to answer this, but but what's your most sought after item? Um, 
Hmm, good question. I, 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 I don't know. You see, I was asked this before, and, and it was something that I sold that I kind of regretted. So I'm going to answer the, answer yeah. the same way. Just a, a good Friday agreement that was signed by all the parties involved in the negotiations. I had one of those, and I flipped it, and I regret that because it's something I'd love to have on my wall. But um, so if I could get another one of those, that's yeah. that's. But I suppose, I suppose, as a dealer, you can't get emotionally attached to anything you buy, can you? You're not meant to, but I still do. I mean, what I usually do is I kind of get, I mean, it's like a a kid with a new toy. I enjoy having it for a while and then you kind of get a little bit bored and you pass it on to the next man and then you take your profit. Sometimes I just flip stuff, but a lot of time I like to keep stuff and enjoy it for a while before passing it. Nice. Uh, It's very interesting. Irish Pickers, Ian Dowling, thanks so much for taking time out to talk to us today, Ian. Mind yourself. Thank you, Ray. Take care.